ESPN dropped an absolute bombshell yesterday when Chris Lowe reported on the Kalen DeBoer hiring at Alabama. He went through and talked about from 49 hours of Nick Saban retiring to Kalen DeBoer being announced and what that looks like, what all of that entailed. That was a really good article. We'll link it in the description. But I want to talk about this from the FSU perspective because Florida State certainly played a very big role in this and could have played an even bigger role had things gone down a little bit different than they did. I spoke with Richie about the Mike Norvell contract earlier in the week, and I'll play that for you here in a few minutes. But first, I want to spend a little time talking about this article and what was said and not said in the article that I think means a lot. Very specifically, the AD at Bama, Greg Byrne, would not comment on who their top pick was and who the first candidate that he reached out to was. He did say that Bama had zeroed in on Norvell and DeBoer. So the Florida State coach and the Washington coach. But again, he would not say who their top pick was. He wouldn't comment on who he reached out to first. And I hate to just assume things. I know that I'll piss Bama fans off in the comments by saying this, but if your number one pick was the guy you landed, wouldn't you just say that? You can sometimes ask a question that's very much a, if you don't answer, I know the answer is no. If he was your top choice, if he was the one you reached out to first, why wouldn't you just say that if you're the Alabama AD? Why wouldn't you just put yourself in a little bit better light and say, yes, we hit on our number one target? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Now, is that proof beyond a shadow of a doubt that Norvell was his number one or top target? I don't think so. But I think it's about as close as you can get to saying that that is the case. I, I think that the, just the fact that he would not tell you that Norvell was their number one target, that DeBoer was their number one target, kind of points to the fact that it, it was Norvell. Norvell was the guy they wanted to replace Saban. He talks about the fear that existed at Florida State, and Florida State was very worried. If you were in our Patreon, if you were in our Discord, I had some confidence, but, man, things got tense. Things got shaky there on Friday morning when all of this was going down. When you read the article, it certainly reads and it implies that once Norvell made his decision on Friday morning, that is when contract negotiations and finalizations of details started becoming more and more clear. It was clear to Burn in Alabama that they were not going to get Mike Norvell and they zeroed in on Kalen DeBoer as their only realistic target at that point. Now, we tried to tell people that that was the case. We tried to tell people what we were hearing and that Mike Norvell was absolutely a candidate. And whether you think he was first or second or eighth, what I'm telling you is that the Alabama AD is telling you that he was at least top two. And then by what he's not telling you, very likely was their number one option. But then the article goes on to talk about who Florida State would have gone after had Norvell taken the Bama job. And it was a name that several of you have very strong opinions on. Several of you have many, many thoughts on. But it was Lane Kiffin, the Ole Miss coach right now. And what would that have looked like if they would have been able to pick up Lane Kiffin? What would the, the atmosphere, the mood, the potential transfer situation look like if they had gotten him? Well, Florida State would have certainly had some guys jump in the transfer portal. You would have very likely been worried about some of your guys following Mike Norvell to Alabama. That's a pretty normal thing. When any coach has gone to a new place within college football, there have been guys that have followed. It happened with Kalen going from Washington to Alabama. It happened with guys at Arizona going from Arizona to follow their coach. It's not uncommon at all. But... If Kiffin had come to Tallahassee, who might have followed him? What kind of a statement would it have been if after Florida State's rough month of December and beginning of January, if they were able to pull one of the most sought-after coaches in the country, if they were able to pull a coach out of the SEC to the lowly ACC, the so-called Power Five Conference, as the committee put it, what kind of statement would it have been if they would have pulled in a coach that has better national championship odds than even Alabama themselves has? Florida State, 
is in a really good position today. But let me just tell you something. If they would have lost Mike Norvell, the narrative around the program was very different at that time. The narrative around the program was much, much different than it is right now. You just had the snub. You, you just had a, a lackluster signing day. You hadn't signed a lot of guys in the transfer portal yet. You did have DJU in. But there wasn't this excitement. There wasn't this hype as there currently is right now. And losing Norvell would have been a big, big issue at that moment. I want to go further on this, but first I do want to give some love to the Battle's End, and I appreciate all that they do. I hope that you're watching their content on YouTube. Make sure that you're subscribed to their channel. Dimitri Emanuel is doing a phenomenal job with a series right now on interviewing different guys on his team, different other guys on the Florida State depth chart. They've done some phenomenal short videos, one that absolutely made me bust out laughing with Luke Cromenhawk and Cam Davis. If you go check out their Instagram, their social media, all of that's getting posted there. Make sure that you're following. I ask you to support every time we talk about them, and I still want you to do that. But I also want to make sure you're checking out the content that they're putting out because it is really, really good stuff. I spoke with them yesterday, and they've got more good stuff coming later on in the year. I want to make sure that you're following along and you're subscribed so that you don't miss any of it. Big shout out here to Michael Alford. If he doesn't get this done, if he doesn't get the Norvell deal done, maybe they land Kiffin. Maybe they don't. But if they don't, and then you have to go to option two and three and four, how far down the pecking order do you have to go before you get a coach that people are really excited about? Are you down in that group of five level again? Are you hoping that you find another Norvell, another diamond in the rough? Florida State's certainly in a better position than they were when Norvell took over, thanks in large part to Mike Norvell and the battle's end, but it was a crucial, crucial time, and Florida State had to retain Mike Norvell, or at the very least, had to get Lane Kiffin, which I like Lane Kiffin. I think he's a ton of fun to follow on social media. I think that would have been a downgrade. I think that would have been a step back. I think it says a lot about the leadership. I think it says a lot about the program. I think it says a lot about the culture that they had a guy ready. They had a plan B ready to go if things went south with Norvell going to Bama. But the fact that they were able to capitalize on plan A, the fact that they were able to get plan A done was massive. Richie and I talked more about that contract and how that ended up going on our show on Sunday. If you haven't seen that yet, Stay tuned right now and check that out. Norvell's contract updates from it came out, were released. Um, he's officially up over, well, I guess right at $10 million, but you would imagine that he would get some bonuses attached on even this year. So I think he'll be over $10 million in 2024. Yeah. $10 million in 2024, it goes up to like, it goes up by 150000 every year after that, taking him up to... 11 million by 2031. Uh, I can almost guarantee you if he is still here in 2031, he will be well over that number um, based on other, um, you know, contract updates, con you know, what do you call it? Restructuring and things like that. So anyway, Norvell being paid like one of the big boys in college football. In fact, his last contract restructuring kind of already had him up over this, but I don't know if he's top 10 right now. I know he's highest in the state. I know that he's second highest in the ACC behind only Dabo, who does have two national championships, only one of three coaches active that has that. Um, thoughts on uh, Norvell's contract and, and where we are with that one? Yeah, I, I think he definitely benefited from the whole Alabama situation with uh, Saban retiring and you know his name being floated around. But I, I'm all for it, man. At this point, you, you have a coach. Here's the thing with college football. You know, you hire a coach. There's no such thing as a sure hire. Like Nick Saban was the one, very few sure hires, right? Like Texas and fans thought Jimbo Fisher was a sure hire. They just paid $70 million to fire the guy. Like there's no such thing as a sure thing. But once you've seen a guy in the program and things work out like the way Norville has, yeah, invest in that, invest in him and, and keep him around and give him incentive to keep him around. I will say his buyout, um, if he were to leave, is very friendly to to Norvell and Jimmy Sexton, which is expected. Jimmy Sexton runs college football 
uh, from an agent standpoint. So I can't get upset about him, but yeah, I, I just think that was a really smart decision on Florida state's part. And I think it was a really smart decision on Mike Norvell's part to stay at Florida state and keep building what he's building because he knows what's going to happen. And I think the other thing that, that, that stands out to me, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Mike Norvell is not signing that kind of contract. If he's not hearing, Hey, two, three years from now, we're going to be in the sec. We're going to be in the big 10. He's not signing that contract with the understanding that Florida state's going to be in the ACC for the next till 2036 just doesn't happen. Um, I think it's a great contract all around. Yeah, no, I think, um, you know, I've, I've heard Pate say this. I know you guys have mixed thoughts on him, but I've heard several people say this. Um, and the way that our season ended last year sucked, right? Like there's no, there's no way around that. There's no way to sugarcoat that. And there's no way to like, Oh, well at least, but if there is a big, at least right. Like the, the thing that I've heard and I saw Pate do like, who are his coaches, that he would say like are next up to win a national championship. And he had Norvell in there, right? Like he had yeah. Stark and Norvell and Kalen DeBoer and Ryan day. Um, and that was pretty much it. Like he maybe had a couple other guys that he threw in there, but like those were the big four that he had. And so like for Norvell to be kind of like mentioned in, in with those names, right. To where, you know, people believe that he's going to be the one, one, you know, able to put Florida state back on top. Right. And, and, have them back nationally relevant. Like they just sent 12 guys to the combine, Richie, and they're still favored to win the ACC next year. They just sent 12 guys to the combine and they still have the best odds in the ACC to go to the playoff. And so, I mean, that's what staying power is, right? Like we haven't seen DJ pl- throw like one pass yet in spring. And Norvell is still thought of as like the guy that's going to be around and, and keep Florida state there. And so anyway, all that said, I think that, you know, the fact that they were able to retain him, if they had lost him, right? You remember how tumultuous that week was? You, you had, you know, everything that had happened from, you know, the, the, still the bad feelings from the playoff and, and the snub and everything else. And the national championship had just happened. And so you were down on yourself again because you were like, man, I feel like we really could have been there. I mean, we could have talked about that more when we were talking about the uh, the uh, uh, combine and stuff. But I guess I'll give ESPN a break on that. But you... uh you had all those feelings and you were feeling, and then like the uh, NCAA violations come out the, and then Norvell's name is getting floated for Alabama. And you're like, yeah, if we lose Norvell right now, I may just lose my wife is a big Alabama fan and she really wanted him. But at the same time, she's like, honey, I really hope he stays at Florida state. Cause she knew I was on edge after that playoff snub. I uh, did not care about the orange bowl. One Iota uh, shout out Danny boy Kane. But yeah, it, it's just, Man, things could have gone bad. If Norville had gone to Alabama, I don't know what this... We might have canceled the podcast, TJ, at that point. Yeah, this, that would be a tough one. Nah, man, we showed up for Jackson State. I, That's we got true. This one too, but, true. Um, but yeah, massive job by Florida State retaining him. And again, getting above over ten million dollars a year. I mean, that you want to you want to play if you want to play big boy football, you you gotta you gotta play it right, and and you gotta you know if you don't think i mean to me it's fairly clear that norvell is a top 10 coach in this sport probably yeah. inching closer to top five but i think everybody would probably agree he's pretty close to that top five you know certainly that he's in that top 10 you know and what i say is you know if you can remove like any uf or um comments from it i think the rest of college football would tell you like yeah he he's a top 10 coach right you, you've got Kirby and and others that are up there really high Ryan Day and and others but man I think that if you're gonna play at that level if you're gonna play in that top ten nil space and that top ten um you know I mean, if you want to be in that top twelve every year in the playoff then you need to pay like it and so Florida State did that and so shout out to them for for getting Mike Norvell uh, locked up for for a long time man I'll tell you this Richie if you can throw it off a um, an attempt from Alabama to take your coach. Um, I'm not saying that you, you know, you're good to go and you're golden and you're clear everywhere else. But if you can thwart off an attempt from Alabama, when Alabama is the team that got in over you with the playoff stuff, you got to like your chances of probably thwarting off just about anybody else as, as time marches on here. 
Yeah, and, and I think Florida State sent a message, right? With, with this new contract, making him, you know, a ten million plus coach a year, th- that was a message saying, "Listen, y'all can try to come for him. I just don't know if he would leave anywhere." Like, I, th- I think the biggest concern would have been if Alabama had somehow got Sarkeesian from Texas, and uh, then Texas had gone off to Ravel. That I think you probably should have been a little concerned about. But for the time being, I, I think Norvell is very happy in Tallahassee. I think his family loves being in Tallahassee, his wife, Maria. Um, I, I just don't see him leaving. I, I think if he continues to have the upward trajectory, trajectory that he's had at Florida State, he's going to be here for a while. Will he be a Bobby Bowden that's here for 30 years? I'd say no, but it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't if he continues the way he's going. Um but yeah, I just think his contract, it made sense. It, it just made sense. Because if you weren't willing to do a contract like that, you're just not committed to play, playing big boy football. But Florida State clearly is.